Link engaged. Visit us at teamspeak.com. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the uh, TL Open. Cast by myself, Total Biscuit, and Mr. Diapolo, whose PC seems to have melted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just turned off, but no problems. We are in the game and ready to go. This is Hack versus Dice Star, the one non Korean hope in this tournament. We'll have to see how he does here on the first map of this series, which is going to be the map Metalopolis. Yes, it certainly will. And while we reboot Apollo's PC, that's what's a good job. We've got a big screen here, isn't it? We're actually live in the Total Biscuit studio. This is the first outing of the Total Biscuit brand new co-casting setup. So hopefully it'll work well. I certainly hope so. Die start moving out right here. That will be the first supply depot down in the corner, hidden behind the smoke. And uh, not really anything you could take away from um, building the supply depot there. It doesn't really matter. It's just though that when your opponent does scout and finally goes around and sees that there isn't a wall, he might not scout the full distance into the base and might not really know that you're there, but nothing really too big to take away from that. Yes, of course, and uh, just in case there might be any proxy planetary fortresses hidden behind there. Yeah, know. definitely, man. There's yeah. enough space for planetary fortresses in there, for sure. They, they, they somehow don't think so, but there you go. <laughs> is, is your computer actually on fire right now, Apollo? No, Am I gonna... Yeah, it, it's a little warm. It's within the presence of Mr. Diapolo. It's the and it studio we're in, man. It sounds so it's... awesome. We're together. We're, like, touching hands and stuff. It's just really we're hot We're not actually here. doing this, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of bromance going on right here. Nothing wrong with that. And, of course, congratulations to the guys over in New York today, but we're not going to get political. But nonetheless, congratulations to them. Dice Star with a refinery starting up right here. Mm. The first deviation between these two. Xenex Hack with absolutely no gas of any description now on 15 supply. So, what would you expect from that? Well, it looks like Xenex Hack's just going to go for a uh, fast command center inside his base. He could add on a couple more barracks uh, and then kind of play with an early aggression, but most likely going for that fast command center. You can see his minerals start to rise now. And he's actually built that supply depot to prevent any SCVs coming inside uh, to kind of keep Dice Star in the dark. And that's what I love about these tournaments is that it's just a clash of styles like Korean uh, versus Europe right now So it's really interesting to see how this game will develop. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely And Dice Star's TBT is very very strong right now as I say he did beat Tarson quite recently So we'll see how well he can actually cope with the Korean right here Just waiting for Hack to start off that command center. is surely coming. He's on yeah. 300 minerals and climbing rapidly and it looks like Dice Star is actually going to go for like a Reaper Expo. I mean, he's got the tech lab up on that barracks already. Uh, there goes the Reaper. So it looks like he's going to be using that Reaper to expand uh, from. He'll be able to use it to deny any scouting from Hack and also be able to get into the base of Hack and uh, find out that command center and find out what exactly is going on because he's pretty clueless at the moment. Yeah, he doesn't really know exactly what's coming for the time being. Command center coming down right here for Xenix Hack and the follow-up, but needless to say, in yeah. this kind of build, the uh, double refinery, which is not remotely unusual. It's interesting to see Dice Star go with the Reaper Fast Expansion. And from your experience watching a lot of GSL and Korean games, is Reaper Fast Expand as prevalent in Korea as it is in, say, Europe? You don't really see Reaper Fast Expand in Korea at all. Uh, you always see uh, one racks expo just like this a hack plane just like the standard in Korea and Reaper Expo is quite more common inside of Europe and America and uh, the problem with it is he won't really be able to do anything as you can see that wall of Marines is going to prevent any Reaper coming in so we'll have to see how he will use that Reaper maybe he can find another hole into hack space. It's certainly a possibility. I mean, the thing about Reapers, especially on a map like this, is they give you the ability to hold on to those Zelmaga watchtowers very, very easily, and mm. you can move backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So it's good nonetheless, even if you don't get into the base. Obviously, Xenex Hack is prepared for that. He did scout the barracks with the tech lab, so he had to be expecting an early Reaper opening, particularly on a map like this, which is fairly expand heavy early on. And uh, is that a reactor on that barracks there? No, it's actually a tech lab. Tech lab, they're coming in right there, yep. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to be switching that up with a factory quite soon. And that's the reason why he went for them two refineries, because he doesn't really want to fall behind in that tech race at all. And uh, as you can see there, the starport and factory, the same for Dice Star over here. Yeah, we're coming with a tech lab right here on the factory. So considering the timing of that tech lab, I would think perhaps we are looking at tank initially. We'll see. Uh, but oh, actually, I'm having a swap around, so he actually does build the tech lab a little bit early. So we may see a bit of Banshee play going on right here. Oh, that's going to be interesting. See how much damage Dice Star can really do with that. Though Stim has started and has begun now for Hack. And he does have the reactor. And actually, the, the Reaper does come in now. Does it get the... Oh, it does get the Mule. Very uh, nice. Really nice hit there by uh, Dice Star. And he also gets the scouting information. Sees the tech lab. Sees the Stim being researched. Sees the factory. Yeah, very, very nice from there, honestly. Worth sacrificing the Reaper, certainly, to try and... 
pick that one off as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. Marines now rolling down, and there's the defense coming in for Zenix Hack, so he should be pretty solid on that one. We do have the cloaking field coming wow. up for Dice. He's really going for it with this one. He will, and it depends how much damage he can do here. I mean, uh, there's, there's, there's no engineering babe been started yet for Hack. Though Stim is going to be out, and with double command centers, he's going to have double the amount of orbital commands, I mean, double the amount of scans, sorry. Uh, so he will be able to defend against it quite easily, I feel. But Dice Star has to do damage with that, otherwise he's going to be very far behind. Yeah, I wonder if perhaps Dice Star feeling confident in his TBT and also in his awareness of the kind of situation that his opponent has in the fact that he is Terran, is thinking, well, he can look for a window. Mm. He can look for an opportunity where that energy is very, very low, where he can start attacking. And perhaps it is his familiarity with this matchup that's giving him this confidence. And uh, the problem for Dice Star, if he doesn't do damage with this Reaper and the Cloak, is that he's so far behind in his tech for his factory. I mean, he hasn't got any tanks, hasn't got Siege Mode, that if it's defended well, Hack can just go on a counter-attack, and there's nothing he can do because he just can't fight against these Siege Tanks without any Siege Tanks of his own. Indeed, I believe Xenix Hack actually did miss the Banshee coming in right there around the side, so I don't think he's fully prepared for that. Indeed, we don't see the Marines rolling out at all as a tank moving forward, but nothing else for the time being. Here comes the Banshee, and there's a little bit of initial harassment. Prevents the building of the refinery and drives everything away, so, I mean, that's a good start, honestly. Hack's already been driven away. The Marines move to intercept. There's the Quick Cloak, and actually, he is out of energy for the moment, so great timing there, once again, by Dice Star as he drives He's taken several kills with this already. Five kills, six kills with the Banshee. Looking very, very good right now. The old look command is going to have the scan very, very soon. And Xenix Hat will go in, but Dice should be able to get away from that easily. Oh, it looks for the interception. Oh, so very close. But he took nine kills from that, so that's pretty good. And if you think about their opening builds, they both went for a fast expand build. So now Dice Star is in the lead. Another Banshee is in, but two Vikings are there to help clean this out. There goes the scan. Yeah, that was nicely done there. Xenix Hack cleans that up quite nicely. Another Banshee coming in for Dice Star. I'm actually kind of surprised that he hasn't transitioned out of this. I mean, that initial damage was good, but if he keeps throwing Banshees away like that, that's probably not going to work out so well. That said, he has forced a Raven from Xenix Hack. Yeah, a lot of resources have been spent in defending against this. While Dice Star is just macroing up, he does not want to get supply blocked, though. He's stuck at 62 at the moment, and he could just basically lose his advantage from here. Yeah, he doesn't want to do that at all, but if we have a look at the comparison between the workers right here, we're looking at 33 SCVs for mm. Xenix Hack versus 4. 46 for Dice Star, that's very significant. It is indeed, and, and that's what happens when you go for a very similar build, very similar opening, you get the command center just a little bit behind your opponent, but you do so much damage with that Cloak Banshee that you're now ahead, but he needs to keep on top of things and not get that. Uh, does he have an engineering bay? That's the, that's the thing I'm wondering from Dice Star. does not want to fall behind in upgrades at all. Dice Star actually does not have an engineering bay right now, so it's looking very likely that he will end up falling behind, as you were saying right there. Although he has started an expansion now to the bottom of the map. Oh, it's a great choice, especially when you're ahead like that, to go ahead and start an expansion. Though he has to be careful, if uh, Hack does scout that, he can go for a very easy time to punish that. But uh, at the moment, it doesn't look like Hack does see that. So uh, the longer this stays undetected, the better it's going to be for Dice Star going into this game. Banshee sniped off right there by Hack without too much of a problem. But as you've said, he has forced the building of Vikings as well as the building of a Raven. Of course, a Raven can be used for later on in the game. But I very much doubt you want to throw away 200 gas that early. Yeah, indeed. And now he has added on that engineering bay finally. He needs to get up with them upgrades. You can see plus one is about 40% already for hack. Does not want to fall behind in that at all. No, not at all under any circumstances. Hack does have a many back out, so drop capability is in play for him. Trying to get his marine count sort of fixed up as quickly as possible. And Hack, in an interesting placement of the supply depot at the top right there. Similarly to try and intercept Babs coming drops, give him a little bit of early warning. Yeah, indeed. I mean, uh, anything that's come, drops, banshees, and especially as the game develops on, you're going to be pushing more towards the center of the map to control the middle. Therefore, spotting anything coming from the back is going to really help you out in defending. Should be pretty good. And Dice Star sitting on a reasonable force right now, primarily consisting, as you might imagine, of Marines. Tanks backing up a few Marauders in the mix, not too many. No, not really. We'll have to see how he does with that. A lot of moves. Does he hasn't he hasn't got the combat shield yet either. No, he doesn't. Um, so that's going to be really you know kind of hurtful for Dice Star. He needs to catch up with that. Definitely, and we do see him finally moving around the map. But look at the spread on the mini map of Hack. He sees everything. It's Direct amazing. line in the center of the map. Sees anything incoming. He's going to scout and look now. Uh, Total biscuit. We do have a drop coming down in the bottom. Could be able to do a lot of damage. It's not going to be spotted either. No, it is not. Now uh, you see Dice Star pulling back, but he is not aware of what's coming in and the map. Awareness of Xenix Hack is really helping. Dice Star moves in his set, but it's not quite quick enough. And this drop could be potentially devastating. Oh, he's taking a lot of fire right now from the ground. Oh, so close. Good lord. 18 HP right there on that Medivac. That was unbelievably close. 
and we do have another drop in the main base too, going around, waypointed around to be able to do a lot of damage. This one is going to be cleaned up, and it didn't really do any damage, just damage to the refinery. But we do have one coming in the main, but a turret is there. Let's keep an eye on it. Yeah, it's good coverage right here, and that medivac won't be lost before dropping half of its marines. Nicely placed right there by Dystar. Interception comes in, Dystar with a couple of tanks rolling out. Those tanks can easily clean this up. I'm actually surprised he's taking as much damage as he is from these few marines. A clean up, and to be fair, not too bad at all. But, however, Denex Hack decides this is the time to get aggressive, considering his opponent's pushback. But there's the scan. Die Star with the stim coming in right here. Plus one upgrade on those Marines at the front. He guns down one Viking. He looks for another. Tries to take that out. Into the middle of the line. Denex Hack goes, gunning his way through that. A lot of damage done right here to the economy. And Die Star needs to clean this up immediately before he takes too much. And there's the follow-up of the Siege Tanks, able to drive the rest of them away. But that was a lot of damage done. And Denex Hack has taken 15 workers total. Indeed he did, but he did lose a lot of his army. But the key thing is he saved three tanks, which is the most important thing. He needs to get that expo up of his own, get that third base up and running, because the longer that's down there, the, the longer he's going to fall behind, really. If you look at the unit tab, still, even though he killed so many SCVs, excuse me, 62 or 64 now to 53 SCVs. It's pretty significant, I've got to say. Upgrades are coming in now for Die Star. He's actually looking for the catch-up, and it looks like he should be able to get it. I believe Xenex Hack is currently only sitting on plus one, which is correct. He hasn't started his plus two yet. We're also seeing a vehicle weapon upgrade for Die Star as well, as he attempts to solidify this economic advantage. Indeed, and now we are having the, well, the kind of containment in the middle of the map. This is all about Metalopolis here. Controlling the Zenta Zelnaga tiles, controlling both lanes is very important, but look how much stuff Die Star has here. He can easily control this right-hand side. Yeah, if I were to say who has the most stuff, I would have to go as far as to say Die Star has the most stuff. 105 army supply. Unbelievable economic powerhouse play right here from Die Star. Even after taking all his economic losses, it didn't really matter because he still has the work account. And we're looking for the charge in right here. Viking moves into seven. He looks to try and take out that Raven. Can he do it? He doesn't. Oh, there he goes. Die Star eliminates it quite nicely and drives Hack all the way back. Indeed, and look at that, 167 supply now versus 140, uh, 135. Dice starts slowly edging towards that third base. If he can get position up there, it's going to be so hard for Hack to come back into this. There's no question, and Hack moving for the interception right now, but he's not doing a fantastic amount of moving. He needs to move there very, very rapidly. There's the deployment, and range down salvos right here on Hack. A little bit of Viking sniping going on, taken out by the Marines. Charging right into the line. This is going to be a do or die situation for both players. As Dice Star charges in, takes a good tank shelling right there by Hack. However, he still has the advantage in terms of the numbers. Those cleaned up quite nicely there by Hack as well, who's able to end the immediate threat to his third. Yeah, this is the definitely time I'd pull back if I was Die Star. I'd go get my fourth base, you've done a lot of damage. Maybe if you're going to see, see loose tanks like that, go ahead, pick them off. But you do not want to be trying to engage here. Now your opponent has too much units. Yeah, that was a mistake. Die Star now getting pushed back. He still has an army count advantage, but still, he's got that deployment right there. And the Marauder's doing massive damage to the tank line, actually. As Enigat pushes back. However, all of the tanks were cleaned up by Die Star, so it looks like he actually made the best of that one. But now his tanks are in trouble. Picked up a few marines. It's going to land on top of them. But the tanks do so much DPS that they might even just kill these marines off. Uh, cleaned up there by Xenex Hacks tanks that flanked in from the side. Die Star still with a significant army count advantage. And his economic situation looked great. 64. Is that 84? That looks like 84. Yeah, 86 yeah. now. SCVs to 50. This is absolutely absurd. Right here for Die Star, who's powering his way through Xenex Hacks. There's a quick split there by Die Star. He draws some fire, but still, he needs to keep his tanks alive. There are four tanks now, possibly five tanks coming in right here for Xenex Hack. Viking interception moving out, and Die Star needs to back away now. Indeed. I mean, he's getting his fourth base up now. As you already pointed out, he has so many SCVs. It's ridiculous. That, uh, he can take that fourth base and saturate it immediately, actually. And uh, look at him. Now, looking at the upgrades, the tanks are now plus one for Die Star, and his Marines are 2 1 compared over to Hacks. 0 0 tanks. He's only and, just uh, building one, one. his armory now, as you can see right there. Terran Infantry level 3 coming up for Die Star right now, and with this economic advantage, he should be able to push Xenex Hack back eventually. And in a straight up fight, Die Star obviously has the advantage. Xenex Hack gets a good deployment out there, and two tanks thrown away right here by Die Star. That's not so great, and driven back. Indeed, he's going to push back. There's no point really for him to go ahead and attack. There's, there's nothing to gain uh, unless you see a significant opening. Uh, because you've got such an economic advantage, you've got the upgrade advantage, you've got the army advantage. Why not sit back, take the middle of the map, control these lanes. Uh, but if you do see an opening, then go ahead. I mean, he's scanned now, sees an opening, and he's going to race and charge back up to get that position by that third base. And this matchup is so 
about position. There's no question about that. TBT is really all about the position. That was a good charge right there. Extremely good charge right there by Dystar. Massive damage coming in, raining it down on Zenix Hex Tax. Another one cleaned up, takes it. And GG, ladies and gentlemen. Dystar, the foreigner hope, takes the first in his best of three series. Wow, what an incredible series that was. Well, incredible first game that was. And that is really showing the strength of foreigners or non-Koreans, should I say, that has been repeated in many tournaments, starting off at DreamHack when Huck did take that tournament win. And now we are seeing the rise of the non-Koreans. Dystar, will he continue to power through this best of three series. I certainly hope so. Dice Star's TVT is so strong. And as you said, if you look at that, just how great his economy was that entire game. And while he made a few slip ups in terms of his positioning, it didn't really matter because mm. he was eventually able to just smash his way through Xenix hack. And of course that final nice little grab there as he charged into the line before Xenix mm. tanks got deployed was absolutely critical. And once that happened, that was it. And, and that actually cloak opening was so surprising oh, for yeah. Hack. He had no idea that he could do that because when you Reaper expand, you don't really have that much gas. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Cloak Banshees hit him. He's like, what? You're not meant to have Cloak Banshees. No, no. Didn't have an Engineering Bay. Didn't have... Well, he did have Stim, but he didn't have any Vikings. And uh, all of a sudden, he did so much damage, pulling SCVs off, stopping the refinery production, killing SCVs. And he, he kind of went for a fast expand build himself. So he just went so... Uh, far ahead quite fast in that game and the key thing is that he was so far ahead he kept the advantage throughout the entire game forced hack to try and pull it back hack couldn't do it unfortunately and die star takes that first game can he go through and win the rest of it yeah, absolutely sensational play there by Dystar, without any question at all. So I am really, really impressed by that. Hopefully he'll be able to do much, much better and continue this all the way into the finals. So he's already won up in this best of three series, mm -hmm. and we'll be looking to get into the next game fairly shortly right here. And uh, if he manages to take down this TL Open, that's by far his biggest result ever. Without question. I mean, question. there's been so many Koreans in this tournament, and uh, unlike any other country, you can say, like, okay, Koreans invaded this, or you can be like, okay, America invaded this, or the UK invaded this. It doesn't matter when you say other countries. When you say Korean invaded the tournament, you mean business. Now we're hoping that Apollo's computer does not melt this I time. I know, around. it's so hot in this little studio of yours, Total Biscuit. I've got my windows turn. open, man. It's all good, but it's, yeah. it's the synergy between us. Yes. It's the, killing my PC. Indeed, that there is chemistry. You, so we're about to get started, hopefully, with game two right here. If Hotbid, Master, and Wizard of Observing is prepared, then we are as well. You are currently watching the TL Open as sponsored by TeamSpeak 3. We'll be going into the game very shortly, folks. Don't go anywhere.